For decades, NASA has managed to make the heroic look almost routine. But as America's last four shuttle astronauts set out for the launch pad today, the drama and sense of wonder returned. Almost a million people gathered to watch Atlantis blast off on the final mission to the International Space Station. After 134 flights and half a billion miles in space, NASA calls this a sentimental journey into history. And as the rockets roared, carrying the sh shuttle aloft on a column of fire, there was this to contemplate. After Atlantis joins the rest of the shuttle fleet in retirement, the United States, the nation which went to the moon, will have no way to put people into space. We want to go to Florida's Kennedy Space Center now, where John Zarella has watched many shuttle launches. John, this last one must have been something very special. Yeah, there's no question about it, Candy, that, uh, you know, coming here for so many years, watching these space shuttles, there was always the sense that there would be a next time, there would be another shuttle. Uh, and, of course, as the, it was clearing the tower today, uh, the sentiment that, that struck me right away was, well, this is it. There will no longer be another shuttle to, to, uh, to come and cover. But, you know, the point you were just making, you know, where does this now leave the United States? And that's the big question. NASA, you know, insisting that uh, it will, in fact, continue outward, perhaps going to an asteroid, perhaps going to Mars. But the questions linger. Is there enough political will? Will there be enough money in the budgets? Will the public be behind such a high-ticket, expensive items uh, to do that down the road? And, again, the United States has no way to put its own astronauts into orbit for the foreseeable future but you know uh, after the liftoff as successful as it was uh, it was a time for the launch director and the launch team to kind of exhale uh, and they talked about how you know this was really a microcosm of so many launches in the past they had to stop the count at 31 seconds while they worked through a problem they had the weather to deal with and Mike Leinbach the launch director kind of made light of the whole fact that 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 post launch briefing of how they made their decision to go ahead with the launch in spite of the weather we met in my office before the before the MMT meeting we flipped a coin <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how we really make decisions no. um, it's got a big dartboard there's a big dartboard you know now the program's over we can divulge some of our secrets <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, what uh, I talked to Leinbach uh, several months ago, and I said to Mike, I said, Mike, what happens now that the shuttle program is coming to an end? And he said to me, he says, well, you know, he says, I'm the launch director. There won't be any more launches to direct, so I don't know. And, of course, you know, that's the feeling of many, many people here. Sadly, thousands of people losing their jobs here at the Kennedy Space Center and at other facilities around the country. And they're in the same boat as Mike Leinbach saying to themselves, what next? Candy? Well, we do know that this shuttle mission ha has a purpose. What, what's, yeah. what's next for this shuttle? Yeah, a big purpose. Uh, for the next 12 days, uh, they'll be docked to the International Space Station starting on Sunday, and they're going to offload thousands of pounds of, of goods, basically filling the pantry, filling, uh, you know, uh, they're going to fill the pantry, they're going to fill the refrigerator. It's the largest payload they have ever taken up on an individual shuttle mission. So, uh, you know, just so that they can, uh, can get the shuttle, get the space station stocked up, with a year's worth of supplies because, you know, there just is nothing as big uh, as, the, uh, as the space shuttle's cargo bay. A lot of smaller rockets that will be able to take material up, uh, take goods up, but nothing that can take as much mass up as the shuttle. And they're going to take down a bunch of basically junk that they no longer need up on the uh, on the space station. So it is a very important mission. They'll land back here on the 20th or the 21st of the month, and NASA is hoping that uh, when they do that, after they safe the vehicle, after Commander Ferguson calls wheels stop, they will allow the thousands of workers who are here to actually go out to the run runway and touch the vehicle for one last time. Candy? Hey, John, you know how we like to say, take me behind the scenes a little. So I want to know what John Zarella who's covered more than 70 launches. You've been at this for about three decades. A uh, little, little tear yeah. for John Zarello when this went up. Give me just sort of your personal feelings. Yeah, you know, there, there, there really was, Candy. There was that moment uh, that I looked around and what, you know, for me, what was so important was that people like Anderson Cooper, who was here with me, and many of the other CNN staffers who were here today, I've asked them all, did you ever see one of these before? No. Did it live up to the billing? Yes. I mean, I looked at Anderson and his face. He was like, 
Wow. That's what made me feel good, that, that uh, people got to see this last launch who had never seen one before, because television just doesn't do it justice. It is a spectacular moment, uh, and it really is one that is etched in your mind. And I know for everybody who saw their first one here uh, today, that it will be a moment that they will never forget. Candy? It's, it's pretty amazing. I tell people it's like you feel like you're being launched when you're down there. It's pretty amazing. John yes, Zarella, um, quite the end of the era, but who knows what's next. Thanks so much. Exactly. The space shuttle Atlantis is on its way toward the International Space Station one last time. Its 12-day mission, which started this morning, is the final flight of the space shuttle program. Let's go back, go back through some of the history. Here's your shuttle timeline. The program started in 1981. That's how far it goes back. You see all the missions here in the 80s, different color for each of the carriers. Here's the 1990s. Look at that as well, through the 90s. And then now, of course, into the past decade plus 2011, you see right here Atlantis now on the final mission, STS-135. What have we seen in this time? Dramatic. Look at that. Miles travel, distance travel, Columbia and Challenger, the two shuttles we lost, of course, in tragic accidents, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor. You see the millions of miles they have flown over time. It's quite amazing when you look at it. Now, how much did this program cost us? If you look at it this way, the space shuttle program and the Apollo program, they come out to roughly the same, 200 billion, 170 billion. But remember, 11 Apollo flights, 137 shuttle flights. Earlier, the Gemini and the Mercury programs costing less money here. One of the questions people ask, what do we get for this? What do we get for this? Well, in computer technology, a number of things. Electronic banking advances, scheduling software have come out of the shuttle program. Let's just look at something else here, consumer home recreation. A lot of different things that were perfected on shuttle missions you can now find around your home. Tracking this last mission for us at Mission Control in Houston, CNN's Ed Lavendera. He's live with us. Ed, how's it going? Great, John. This has actually been a, a rather fascinating place to kind of catch this glimpse of this, of this uh, moment in history. So it's been a fascinating day for us. And what can you see right now as you're there tracking mission control? Take us around. Give us a tour. Sure, sure. All right. Well, if you look behind me here, uh, the, just right behind me is where the flight director sits. And that is the person uh, that they have teams that will rotate here. This, this will be manned 24-7 uh, during the course of, of this mission. And what's fascinating is, is that there are very few... Uh, monitors that actually show them video of the space shuttle uh, and and they're really just reading all those monitors you see down there is just full of data that they constantly monitor and the the main map up on the uh, mission control center here gives them a, a the course of where space shuttle where the space shuttle Atlantis is in orbit and right now uh, it is uh, just past the eastern seaboard and is out over the the Atlantic waters r right now so uh, it has been fascinating to see just how quickly that spatial Atlantis, John, has been whipping her around uh, the Earth, traveling at 17,500 miles uh, per hour, and it takes about 90 minutes to do uh, an, a full orbit around the Earth. So uh, they're already hard at work. The, uh, the cargo bay had, has, has been opened up, and they're planning to uh, connect with the International Space Center Sunday morning. And, Ed, as you're there, they obviously have a busy 12 days ahead there at Mission Control, working around the clock. But when you talk to folks, any sense of nostalgia that this is over? You know, I think that's starting to settle in. It was a fascinating day, and in, in, in the hours leading up to the launch this morning, uh, everyone in this in mission control was consumed with the weather situation. It was really a last-minute decision, and it was fascinating to see about three or four minutes before the launch the intensity that was picking up in this room. The flight director, Richard Jones, pacing back and forth, scratching his head. At one point, he stopped and said, look, just everyone give me a second. I need to think about some things. So it was last minute, and then about two minutes before the launch, Everything settled down. You could tell that they were confident that uh, this was going to be a go, and they kind of enjoyed the moment. Afterwards, we got to speak with Richard Jones, and he said, look, now it's really starting to sink in. These people have to make sure that that shuttle crew gets home safely, that they complete the mission, uh, and then, then that's when the emotion of this moment will really sink in. Remember, there are a great deal uh, of people who will be losing their jobs here in, in the coming months, some 2,100 people that are contracted to work and support the shuttle program. John? Ed Lavendera, live for Russian Mission Control. Ed, thanks.